welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conagher and I'm building a Kit Fox Model 7 STI. In this next episode, you're going to see me sticking the horizontal stabilizer into the fuselage and installing it. On the aft portion of that, I'll be installing the elevator. On the back of the horizontal stabilizer, there's six locations where there's bushings that I had to machine down, push in. Um, then there's going to be six locations on the elevator that have to attach to those. So a couple of times in the video you're going to see me using a clamp to keep those pieces pushed together nice and tight. Basically getting the holes lined up and uh, making sure I can get the screw in the holes and, and get the rest of the hardware on there and get that tightened up. And at one point I do have to take the, the horizontal stabilizer off the fuselage to actually get the elevator into position put the horizontal stabilizer back in there and then reattach the the two uh, vertical the V brackets that that support the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator together not really a big deal um, then I'll be pulling the diagonals to get the tail um, equidistant on each end left and right from the tip of the tail uh, getting that prepped ready to go for the next video which is probably going to be the the trim actuator on the horizontal stabilizer so let's get into it starting the horizontal tail installation Here's the pictures out of the manual. And here I am getting the shop ready to go, bringing down the horizontal stabilizer in the, in the elevator. I'm gonna do a pre-fit in the fuselage just to see how things fit in there. I'm looking around, getting all the parts ready to go. Put the tail of the plane up on a bucket so I have a better uh, working angle. The inventory list out and I break out boxes five and six which contain all the screws nuts and bolts washers and rivets I spend a lot of time going through these boxes and I would say don't be a tight ass like myself get yourself a couple little organizer boxes I should have done this from the very beginning but every time I went to Menards for some parts I would look at them and then just say nah I don't need those things and I found myself in and out of those bags and I would get them unorganized just as quickly as I would get them organized. So the last time I went to Menards, I finally picked up uh, four of these. Actually, I picked up three, and I would say you could get by with four, but they're relatively inexpensive, and for about $22, you'd have yourself uh, nuts and bolts and screws and rivets organized and ready to go. After picking them up, I just stuck in the dividers and then organized them up by bolts, washers, nuts, however you'd like to organize them, and it sure makes it a lot easier when you turn the page to the next set of instructions, you can easily look in there and say, I need two bolts. So you grab the bolt bin and find the, the parts that are organized by serial number. And you can grab the next bin for washers, screws, rivets, whatever you need. Quickly pull out the parts you need for the section you're working on, close up the parts bins. And then when you finish with those hardware items, just uh, stick them back in the box and they're nicely organized and ready to go for when you turn the page and move on to the next set. So again, quick, fast and dirty cheap i would uh, pick a few up right from the beginning you're going to save yourself a lot of time just by uh just by having those things organized when i get to the end i even had a few extra spaces left over for the for the rivet bin here i got the parts needed and i've set them on top of the instructions and i'm going to be readying the slider blocks slider block marked at five eighths of an inch and ready to be cut on the bandsaw Two blocks cut, I need to sand them to round over the edges a bit. 
face sanding also since they're a little too thick to fit between the metal slots that they go in. And I started with this piece of 220 grit sandpaper and then quickly transitioned over to the power belt sander that I have hanging on the wall. And you can use whatever method you'd like to get the job done, but hand sanding them was taking a long time. Poor camera angle on the belt sander, but you get the idea. You just got the belt sander running and set them down on there. And I took them back over to the piece and tried to fit them in there. And once they fit, then I would uh, fine tune them with that 220 grit sandpaper that I had sitting on the bench. Face sanding on the belt sander reduces the spaces, reduces the spacer thickness in the direction of the two red arrows. The blocks protrude a little bit, and this is required in the next step. We'll drill through the, face, the top faces only, then place the stabilizer in the fuselage and adjust the blocks for a friction fit against the vertical slider tube before the final drilling. the slider block brackets and you can see preparing to lay out mark and punch these measurements prior to drilling the faces of the metal and into the blocks. just when you think you're doing a hell of a job of keeping the drill perpendicular to the work surface. Obviously, I have work to do in this area. It appears that I managed to do a little better job on the second hole in the same piece. Once I finished the two holes on this tab, I immediately drilled two more in the other tab. And once you drill, you immediately deburr, get rid of any uh, extra metal pieces. four holes at the location shown on the top face only of the stabilizer slider block brackets and deburr the holes, fabricate two slider blocks out of the material provided. And that step number 23 has been completed. Next you'll position the slider blocks in the slider block brackets so that the distance between each bracket and the square vertical slider tube on the fuselage are equal. With the slider blocks snug against the fuselage tube, back drill through the holes in the brackets, through the blocks, and the bottom flanges of the brackets. Clico as you go to keep the blocks up against the tube, remove the blocks, and deburr the holes. Assemble the slider blocks with the hardware shown. So you can see that curved tube on my right there that goes up the leading edge of the 
vertical tail. That pretty much was in my way when it came to drilling. So here I'm wrestling with some tight tolerances, trying to get that back bushing in place. Uh, since I didn't have a 12 inch drill bit, drilling up from the bottom was quite difficult. And since you're supposed to keep those blocks under pressure on that vertical, that square vertical tube, uh, couldn't really take it off and, and drill it without it being in the fuselage. Installing the rear stabilizer pivot mount hardware in this location was tight and it was fighting against me, but I won. Clamping in the horizontal tail retaining blocks, so they apply clamping pressure against the vertical slider so I can finish drilling them up from the bottom as the instructions state. Again, this is an awkward area to drill without the 12 inch drill bit, which I mentioned previously. It's a little difficult to see through me, I know. Uh, sometimes in the heat of the moment, I get carried away with what I'm doing before I realize that I didn't capture it on video. So I will address this deficiency in the future. Finally installing the hardware for the front blocks that squeeze against the vertical slider tube and act as a guide, reducing any side to side slop at this connection point with the fuselage. Here's the aft attachment point and the forward attachment point, which technically isn't really an attachment, it's just uh, basically a guide. Attaching the left and right stabilizer braces, followed by attaching the elevator to the aft side of the horizontal stabilizer. Here are the left and right braces with the hardware ready to install to the bottom of the fuselage. Again, putting the fuselage up on that five gallon bucket seemed to be about the perfect height to work at. Pulling the diagonals on the tail. They're supposed to be equal on each side. You have to remove a brace, adjust the other brace, and then just basically work back and forth a little bit. Uh, this took me a few tries, but I eventually got it. Final sanding on the six bearings that will be installed in the horizontal stabilizer inside the already installed bushings, which are not shown. Put these in the drill press and I hit them with 220, 320, 400, and Scotch Brite. And even though I'm only showing you one bushing here, I probably did this five or six times per bushing. It really did take a long time, and I'm not sure if maybe the batch of bushings I got were just a little too thick, but this was the same process I had to do with the bearings that I'd press fit into the horizontal stabilizer. So this definitely took some time. I would say I spent probably an hour sanding all these, all these bearings. I had started to sand them by chucking them into a drill earlier in one of the previous episodes. I thought I was taking forever to do it and I didn't even get one of them to go in. So 
drill press is the way to go, I think. and it should just slide in. And that's what I was having problems with earlier. I did have to sand it multiple times with 200, 400, and Scotch-Brite to get it to, to slide in like that, but you can see it goes in and out much better now. Now it's time to see how the elevator goes on. And as it turns out, I thought I could just loosen up those braces and slide it in on top of the horizontal stabilizer but I end up having to take the horizontal stabilizer completely out, slide in the elevator, and then put the vertical stabilizer back in. It didn't quite work. I get the horizontal stabilizer back in place, tighten it in. I need to line up and attach the elevator to the six spots on the back of the horizontal stabilizer. And some of the bushings need a little bit of coaxing. So uh, you'll see me using a clamp here to help line them up, squeeze them together so that I can get the hardware installed. first couple screws and then clamping the others that, that are really tight so that I can get the hardware inside. And moving the elevator up and down helped out as the guy's working the screw in through some of those tight fittings. And finally, tightening them up as I go, one through six. Hello again, and thanks for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and click that like button and the subscribe button. And if you click that uh, comments button, you can actually write a message to me and tell me if there's something you'd like to see or something I did wrong. We can actually communicate to each other. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. And then don't forget to hit that little bell because that will, uh, that will alert you to more future content. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.